there we go. I gotta make this quick and concise with this few little sips from the most amazing glass of root beer rum ever. Yes. Ah, uh, hello, folks. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. Happy Memorial to everyone. I showed my boss my Stars and Stripes cat shirt. Say, like, whoa. I never thought you would wear something like that. Three times a year, folks. That and sometimes to the gym. It's actually a fairly comfy t-shirt. Just never... People would never think I would wear, like, a kitty shirt. But they will every so often. Especially when it's appropriate. I'm not here to talk about me wearing kitty shirts. I'm here to talk about some Monday Night Raw. Thank you, Vince. Vince, thank you. Thank you, we had, an, we had an audience. That's all I had to do for like a month. But no, you had to be set in your ways. Whatever. Oh, before I get to the show, a couple of people I'd like to thank. Agaro. No, Agavo. Yes, Agavo. Thank you for that comment. Yep. That was a very fun show. That double or nothing, that was very entertaining. And you, sir, you've won twice in that match. Because you got that six count. And yes, Strazo, I am extreme. I'll have all four. I think there was a comment when, in the Discord when he said, who would you want to go out with? And I said, I'm extreme. I'll take all four. Although in reality, it would probably just be Billy Kay. Because, or probably actually, there's three some with him. Probably be Alexa Bliss, because Nicole, on uh, and the, yeah, Nicole Glenn Cross. I don't know what her, I forget what her married name is, but Nikki Cross is married. Peyton Royce is married. Billy Kay's with Peyton Royce. I don't even want to know how that works. But still, that's okay. You, sir, 
Mr. Dronzo have earned that air guitar. Because you are an air guitar hero. And if you did not see it, I'd like to thank. Or at least wish everyone a happy Memorial Day. Where's the pen at? Where's the pen? It's so weird. This dust keeps on eating pens. That's okay. I'll use that one for now. That's all I need. So there's a my little tribute for Memorial Day, folks. Enjoy. And now let's get to some pro wrestling. It starts off the Kevin Owens show, and Kevin Owens brings up Asuka. And this very quickly deteriorates because then when Asuka shows up, you're going to have Charlotte Flair showing up. Then Natalia shows up. Natalia has to get it together. Natalia might be the next one goes out because she's going to catch baby fever. I have a feeling about that. And then finally Nia Jax comes out. Oh! And you know what? They've changed Asuka's outfit. She's back to bright, crazy color face Asuka with like the weird still reverse cut out t-shirt. Asuka's got a cute little tummy. I don't care. But they also show the audience. And it's so good because Vince finally learned that it's so much better if there's people cheering. It doesn't matter if it's Shotsky Blackheart. The only thing I can say about that is she should just be riding around the entire ringside with her tank. A little toy tank. Uh, who else was there? Bob Etsundo was there. Uh, Casey Catanzaro was, was there. Uh, Lacey Lane was there. Um, oh, Dijakovic was there. Donovan Dijakovic. I swore I saw Bob Etsundo. Do -do -do. But I don't. Bob Tunde is pretty cool. Uh, what's his face? Jake Atlas, I think, was there. Uh, Bloom's kid was there. He's the blonde-haired one. 
Dia was there. I'm trying to think. What other women? It was a really short with... Bro oh, Santana Garrett was there. That's weird, because I thought Santana Garrett like left. Because I know she blasted WWE on their policy about this whole coronavirus nonsense. I don't care. You know what I say? You want to get paid? Get back to work. It's that simple. But so, so that's that. Um, again, eventually it breaks down. As things always do, there's going to be a triple threat match between Charlotte, Natalia, and Nia Jax to face Asuka at the upcoming Backlash, which I still have no clue when it's going to be. Two weeks from Sunday. I always get that confused. Because it's not next Sunday. Does that mean it's the following Sunday? Or the Sunday after that? I don't know. If you want to leave a comment out there in the YouTube universe, it's always welcome. Oh, this sure is comfy feeling. I'm, I'm surprised I don't wear this more often. Well, I know why I don't. I know why I don't wear it more often. But that's okay. It is comfy. You ever have one of those comfy shirts you're like, why don't I wear this more often? Uh, that's how I feel about this shirt. That's okay. Because again, I ranted and raved. My ex-girlfriend got this shirt for me. I'm fine with it. She, like, tried to hack off the ones I got her on Facebook, and that just pissed me off. But with this, well, I'll keep it. it. Reminds me a little bit of her, but again, if I need that gym shirt, <laughs> who cares? Um, so then we have Kyla in the back, and Paul Cruz is an interview. So the first match is going to be Andrade. Versus Apollo Cruz, and whoa, Zelina Vega came out as SNM Zelina Vega, and this is pretty cool. Again, the crowd was there, and um, they did have like the hockey plexiglass though. That was a little confusing, and it took a little bit of getting used to because you're like, why is it reflecting like that? It's like, oh wait, that's is that plexiglass? Are they in a hockey re arena? Did they convert the performance center to a minor league hockey arena? Who knows? But, I mean, hey, whatever they want to do, whatever whatever they think keeps the audience there and keeps everyone, I guess, safe. I know they were saying that everyone was screened. And screened is different than tested. Tested is when they tell you to stick the Q-tip up your nose and it goes away for, I think, like two to five weeks. I think so. I'm not exactly too sure that whole process Screening is when they say, are you okay? And like they um, zap your forehead to make sure your temperature is not above 104. As long as you say, I'm fine. And you have a human range of temperature. Okay. They know like 98.6 is normal. I think in my experiences, I got my temperature taken once. It was like 98.5. That's close enough. I mean, 98.8. It's like right there. It's, it's, it's when you get into like, like literally like the mid to low 90s. That's when you, you really start to freak out. And I know when you get above, I want to say like 102. It's, it's like when you start to freak out. That's okay. It is what it is. So with this match, it was really fun. Um, very, it was fast paced. I was shocked. Andrade can put up a fast pace with the exception of the commercial break. Um, something for. Oh yeah. Um, so in this match, it was a solid vertical suplex. Andrade then got sent to the corner. Just toss a. He, <laughs> Paul Cruz just like picked like. Manhandled Andrade a little bit, like a toss back body drop. And Selena Vega, she tried to interfere, but that wasn't happening. She got up on the ringside, wasn't happening. Uh, Paul Cruz said, No, what are you doing? Get off here. Then, of course, Andrade tried to capitalize. That didn't happen. Andrade got whipped. And Selena, but he's like, Oh, no, the first time. And then Paul Cruz caught him with a kick and sent Selena Vega. 
taking a bump all the way to the ground. That was pretty impressive. Um, so they had to look after her. That took us to commercial break. And there was the uh, arm bar attempt. However, that was countered by Apollo Cruz. That was pretty impressive. Um, then there was the, the hanging double stomps. They were in the corner. Oh, I hate that little fleshy part. It's annoying. Get that out. Ah, that's it. That's disgusting, but I don't know. The little thing that grows sometimes between like the side, right along the side of your fingernail. Yeah, it just feels weird. I think everyone gets that every so often. It's just annoying. Then I did that to my, I had, my cat had something like that. It's not a hangnail. But yeah, I had to help her get her old claw off with the new claw form. Yeah, she was annoyed with me for like five minutes and that was it. Uh, but, oh, back to this match. Uh, then we had Angel Carso was in the back watching the match. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Kayla comes back. What do you think about this match? Okay. Oh, no, Charlie. Charlie, a wrestling match is like making love to a woman. And you're like, what? It's like, it's very slow and steady. Then there's a lot of body touching and pounding. Charlie got a little moist there, I think. She she was getting a little excited. I think Angel Garza was getting a little excited, too. No, no, no. You're an engaged man, Angel Garza. Should not be making advances on Charlie like that. Although, Charlie, if you're single, I'm available. <laughs> so that, that was just weird. Wrestling is like making love to a woman. <laughs> Angel Garza is never going to live that down. She had a match later, which is actually pretty good. And then Andrade hit the double knees. But then Apollo Cruz made his comeback. Oh, the Gorilla Press slam. Followed by the standing moonsault and the standing shooting star press. Wow. And I'll tell you what. Apollo Cruz won his U.S. belt which is probably a long time in the making because he was good in NXT. Very consistent worker in WWE. He always went along with everything. Said, hey, we need you to get injured. But he was rewarded. I won't mind that. I want that too. I want to dislocate a finger at work and come back and say I'm like, honorary assistant manager. I could deal with that. I'll tell you what, this was a fun match. Um, it was a surf and turf match. We did an interview and said in front of all NXT people trying to keep, keep their spirits up. So that's always good to see. Seth Rollins and Murphy and Austin Theory there, the cult of Rollins. And Charlie's there trying to conduct an interview. Oh, Charlie uh, conducted an interview with Charlotte. Woo! Then the Iconics come out. They cut a, a heel promo on Cross and Bliss. And then Nikki Cross had a pretty good promo since her time out of Sanity. That was pretty good. Again, I got a clap from Nikki Cross. Billy Kay's always been like cute though. Oh, in real life, her, her boobies are a lot smaller than, than, than they are on TV. It's always been like the magic of, of TV for some reason. I'll tell you what, in, long, in real life, she has like long legs too. It's like she's like all legs in real life. I still don't know what TV does to you. I don't even know what YouTube does to you. I'll tell you what, I think those cleaning solutions are going to I have to use it at work or getting me like hand cancer or something in like 20 years. I won't be able to sue or get wrongful damages because of coronavirus, but maybe because like the company's incessant adherence to using freaking strong cleaners and that gloppy hand sanitizer. It takes me longer to wash my hands off with that stuff. I've washed my hands at home more frequently because I've had to use that stuff 
then this whole idea of the the the, the, the COVID nineteen virus. I don't know. It's just stupid stuff. Whatever. And then there's MVP. And in the VIP lounge, uh, Drew comes out. He, Drew, of course, MVP just insults him for the most part. Drew claimers him. Bobby Lashley comes out. One day they're going to have a fight. And that's going to be fun. And then there was an interview. Or then there was supposed to be an interview. And Kayla was going to interview Natalia. But she was on the phone. With TJ, who is her husband, her real life husband, Tyson Kidd. I guess she calls him, calls him TJ. I don't know why. Whatever. But then she was like on the phone for the whole time, which cell phones are banned in my workplace. Like, I have to keep my cell phone in a special locker because if not, like, the only thing I would do is show people pictures. Well, I show them pictures anyway. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, what's a cool picture? Oh, yeah. Of this. Which is my cat helping me work. There she is. My cat exploring new stuff when I switch the office around. And, of course, the best thing pretty funky cans of beer. That's not a Florida based beer. I don't know what it is. So again, they should be kept at home. Like I do, like actually most of the time I leave it at home. I don't bring it to work with me. It's, I don't know. It's an annoyance and a distraction from work and I have to charge it up too. That's probably why. So yeah, Natalia was on the phone and like by the time she was ready for the interview, she's like Kill's like, time's up. So, Maddie, she might be getting baby fears. Because one woman gets it, and then you say, who's next? Who's next? Who's next? The Becky Lynch voice. And then the next match, that was Kevin Owens versus Angel Garza. Angel Garza jumps so much as smart. Um, Garza works over the knees of Kevin Owens. But Kevin Owens eventually does counter with a DDT. But he can't fully use his knee. This is the first wrestler in a long time that's actually fully sold a knee injury, which is rare. Unless it really happens like Britt Baker. Because, oh yeah, I, I think I'm I think I need a correction. News flash, news correction. Um, I think according to the one doctor, she tore not her ACL, which I was kind of scared of because I know that's six to nine months, but her LCL which is her lateral collateral ligament. So that's probably, I think, one to two months. Then it said, like, she also broke a bone. That's probably worse than tearing the LCL. When I turned my MCL, it was eight weeks, one week in an immobilizer, uh, seven weeks in a, in, a, in a functional brace. So for an LCL, that's on the outside of the knee. So the MCL is on the inside. The LCL is probably, I'm guessing, probably the same time frame, de depending on the bone that she broke. That actually sounds worse than tearing the ligament. I don't care what people say. The ligament damage is, tends to be longer. Bone breaking just sounds worse. So that was an update. Uh, so Kevin Owens is he can't do much. Um, even on, on the top rope, he looks kind of shaky. Does its top rope sent on? Oh well, Angel Garza really goes after the knee. Hits the wing clip clipper, and Angel Garza wins. I was shocked. This was a short match, but I'll tell you what. Kevin Owens is so good. Even if, even though it was a short match, it's still a surf and turf match. Again, yeah, probably based really on the strength of Kevin Owens, and of course the wrestling ability of one Angel Garza. 
Then we have the Viking Raiders sitting on the Street, street Profits and Golf. They're like, both of you, get out of here. Then they take to the putt-putt course. And I swear, this is one of two golf of putt-putt courses. It's either the one right off I-4, right outside Orlando. And it's hard to tell because the hotels look the same. Or if it was the one here in Daytona Beach. I mean, that's not that long of a trip to go from Orlando to Daytona Beach. So that's possible. Then, then you can just go to the beach and chill out. And then it's Orlando that's right there anyway. So it's close enough. I swear I've seen that putt-putt course. And there was the Gator. And then Ivar versus the Gator. That would have been funny. And then back at the Performance Center, there's Lana. Whoa. Lana. You have to dial it back with that makeup, sweetheart. You look like a $2 stripper, okay? Back in the day when strippers were only charging 10 bucks for a lap dance and like a dollar for a little booty shake. Yeah. She has to dial it down with that makeup. She has such a naturally pretty face. And it's just that when she overdoes it with the makeup. Like last, I think a couple of weeks ago, she looked very natural. I'm sure she put in some eyeliner, some lipstick. But it looked very minor. It looked cosmetic. But this was like full face painting mode. No, it, 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 it's not a good look for Lana. Again, when I think... Actually, it was funny because then there was... Then there was a new... Everyone, every couple in YouTube... Every couple in WWE is making a YouTube channel. Because now... Eric and... I think it's Eric. And Sarah Logan made their own channel. Sarah Logan looks so cute. It's terrible. The way she like curls up on the couch and it's not wearing makeup. Damn, she's cute. I, oh, Eric. Congratulations, my mean man. You, sir, are punching way above your weight class. But Lana just looks terrible now. She looks overly Barbie dolled up. Then there was Seth getting his guys all psyched up. Then the next match we had uh, Murphy and Austin Theory taking on Alberto Crillo and Alistair Black. And wow, this was fun. Again, the thing about this, this match, this whole show, for the most part, felt really fast-paced. The matches were a decent length. A little bit less talking for change. Generally, when they really had to. Again, that interview after the match for Apollo Crews was really heartfelt. Um, the whole the thing with Natalia, if that's going to be Natalia's thing. Oh, God, help us all. But this was really good. The Austin Theory and Murphy, I mean, they're smart. However, when Umberto flies, though, wow, they were on the outside of the ring. Umberto just goes flying. Again, a very fast paced fast paced match. Umberto more of the um a luchador style. Again, more of the flippy stuff. Alistair Black, very quick strikes though. No plotting headlocks and, and no chin lock manias. And I mean they would do the arm bar, but they transitioned to the arm bar so quick into something else. It was good. And then there was the Austin Theory did that GTS turnbuckle bomb. Um, Bert Ho. He can kick too. He's no slush when it comes to the, those fast flying legs. Uh, again, Alistair Black. He did this moonsault. Austin Theory, however, did hit the ATL onto Umberto. Alistair Black was distracted by the shenanigans outside by Murphy. And they won. And that was that was, uh, it was good in the end. It's like, yeah, Alistair. Put the chair down because they had poor Umberto outside. And then they realized Alistair Black was going to get him. He threw a chair in the ring. And they put Umberto's eyes. Umberto had great facials too. He, he like really eyed that. It's like, oh, oh, shit. No, no, no. It was really good facial and amazing expressions by Umberto. Again, when you do great stuff, I will tell you, I will say that that was great. 
when you do bad stuff, I will say you do bad stuff too. Yeah, you can take it as a knock, whatever. Umberto's facials and his whole reaction to potentially losing an eye was pretty good because he was being held down and he had that look of absolute terror as he stared in those steps. And of course, Seth would be like, no, put the chair down or he loses an eye. The chair's down. Like, okay, now kick that chair out of the ring. I'm going to tell you why Rey Mysterio made the sacrifice. And I'm not into that. That's like weird stuff. Umberto was really good, though. Umberto made me like that whole promo. Wow. Impressive. And therefore, I shall bump this match up. This was another surf and turf match. Probably more so for the end than the, than the whole match itself. But that was good. Again, maybe maybe it's just that crowd. Maybe just having people cheer. Maybe like the hope that Shotsky Blackheart is going to drive her tank in the audience section, just driving in circles around the like, go, go. That would be really cool to watch Shotsky Blackheart the whole match. It would be like a tank girl match. Because instead of Lumberjack, just as Shotzi Blackheart driving her tank around the ring to make sure no one interferes and to keep people inside. But that's a nice new gimmick match. I like that match. That's a very good match. I like that match. Then there's Edge talking in some storage facility in the, in the front and center. Then back you have MVP with the Street Profits saying, hey, if you don't really have a fight, fight us. Eh, it is, that, that was what it was. And then we come back, and it's going to be Charlotte versus Natalia versus Nia Jax to determine who faces Asuka in, at um, Backlash. And Asuka's on commentary. Yes. Yes, thank you, Vince. Asuka on commentary and with audience is utterly amazing. Although Shotzi Blackheart should be driving her tank around ringside. Uh, so this was a fun match. Nia slams Italian to Charlotte. For the most part, the basic narrative of this match is that when Charlotte and Natalia weren't double teaming Nia, they were either wrestling each other or Nia was beating both of, both of them up at the same time. Very quick of the match. That's it. It was a good enough match, though. Um, again, Nia Jax slammed Natalia into Charlotte. They would double team on Nia a lot. Uh, Charlotte hit. Then for some reason, Charlotte like took just the table cover off. The table. We found out why. Uh, but she has Nia just with the table cover, which looks like a flimsy piece of like fiberboard. Not even plywood, just like fiber fiber wood. Very thin at that. Almost, almost like laminate for some reason. Yeah. That's a good way to describe it. Laminate. Um, and then, of course, Natalia came to Titan Nia Jackson ringside. I'll tell you what. Natalia didn't look too sure of herself. Because then they put Nia Jax to the table for the double suplex spot. Uh, and then Flair and Natalia go at it. Um, they go out for a while. Nia Jax recovers pretty quickly from it, though, which is sh some shock that she double splashes the two of them in the corner. Then, then there was like a uh, let's see, here, what there was nice again, nice, nice double, nice double team in the corner. Of the, it's always good to see smooth working double teams like that, even if they're not necessarily aligned. But then there was a really awkward Tower of Doom spot. Where Natalia was at the bottom, Nia Jax was going to get power bombed, and Charlotte Flair was going to eat the suplex. I think the person who got the worst of it, it honestly looked to me like like Natalia like, like tweaked something. Not a tear, not a major pull, but it's like, ugh, she just like tweaked something. Like, you, you, every so often, you, you bend quickly the wrong way, and you're like, ooh, I have muscle there. Something something, something I can pull back there. And it's like, 
a sharp, intense pain for a couple seconds. By the end of the day, it's like, oh, yeah, I did do something to my back. I just forget what. But she just looks like she tweaked something. And that's never a good sign. Um, then there was a little bit more back and forth. Charlotte would try for the figure eight on both of them. Natalia would try. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Nia Jax's legs are too big for either the figure eight or sharpshooter, unfortunately. Wrong part of the body to target, ladies. And I'm losing my voice, so I'm talking way too much. And talking through a mask sucks. Oh. But the rum clears all that up. Yes, the rum. Um, so then finally what happened is that Charlotte got tossed to the outside. She's going to like sit there and watch, too. When Charlotte's developing... Randy Orionitis. Whereas when she's not motivated, she just walks, she just goes through the motions. Uh, she was just watching from the outside. That was probably the finish anyway. Nia Jax hit the Samoan drop on to Natalia. She's going to face Asuka. Uh, Asuka did face Nia Jax. Five, six years ago in NXT. They're still both in NXT. Yeah, X3. Four, five years, maybe. Let me amend that. But sometime that, I know she did face Nia Jax once. That was probably like her worst match ever, too. So, oh well. This match overall, Asuka helped make it. It was still just a cheeseburger of a match. Then our truth went to Twitter. He said, I, I hope Tom Brady beats you, Gronk. Gronk showed up. Who knows what. Uh, Ric Flair. Come on and say, my man Randy Orton is going to win that greatest wrestling match. Because I've been in. He actually has been in a lot of great wrestling matches. We think about uh, Rick, uh, Flair versus Dusty Rhodes, if you really want to go back in time. Uh, Flair versus Sting. Flair versus Steamboat. Um, Flair versus Shawn Michaels was pretty good for what it was. Again, for what it was, Flair versus Jay Lethal was at least entertaining. And he, and he put someone over, too. And then we get to another Liv promo. Liv, if you really want to feel better. And do one of two things. You can do like everyone else in Florida does. And that is always go for the rum first. <clears throat> yep, that makes you feel better. Or, hey, Liv, I'm single. So yeah, she was telling us how she was self-conscious. I don't know. Love Morgan's hot. Except for was it her or Carmilla that was like totally that totally didn't want to be here that one day in Daytona Beach. I actually think it was Liv. Now that I think about it, but well, that's okay. And we have our main event. It was the Street Profits taking on MVP and Bobby Lashley. This was again another fast-paced match. And it shows Bobby Lashley does not have to be a slow plotting Sherlock Mania brute. He can have a fast and good pace match that keeps up the pace pretty quick. He's always been capable of this. WWE has buried so many good talents coming from Impact, I think, just because of Dixie Carter and he buried EC3. Bobby Lashley has yet to shine now that he's back from Impact or TNA or Global Force, whatever it was back then when he was there. But now he's being allowed to shine and he's and he's showing them what he can actually do in a wrestling match. They're saying, well, we want you to be slow, plodding, brutish, chinlock mania guy. No, be, have him go to be, be a good professional wrestler the way you normally do things. Yeah, there's going to be a headlock or two. 
But that's okay because at least when he delivers it, it's a headlock takedown, and you can see him crank away. So it looks like he's like, yeah, he's trying to hurt this guy with a headlock. He just might be able to do it too. So again, that's the Bobby Lashley I want to see. The Bobby Lashley from, from TNA. Or these really early days in WWE. Uh, Ford get pizza again. So again, my only qualm is that the WWE has very formulaic tag team matches. Small guy gets beat up. Uh, then there's double, the classic double team. Oh, well, yeah, actually, it went like this. So Ford gets beat up. Street Profits in and come in. They double team Bobby Lashley. They get sent outside. And then there was the chops. But Bobby Lashley delivers, which like just looks like pure pain, which is like pure muscle and like bone and just hitting flesh. Ooch. And then they do the classic double team where they expose the ribs and. Uh, Bobby Lashley does a sidewalk slam. Eventually, Dawkins does get the hot tag when MVP's in the ring. Uh, Lashley, he just like decides, I've had enough of this garbage. He just puts Montez Ford in the full Nelson after the Street Profits at their finisher. Uh, the referee's like, okay, you have five seconds. One, two, come on, Bobby, let him go and win DQ. Three, I mean it this time. I am going to disqualify you because you're at the count of four. Five. Hey, I have to DQ you. Ring the bell. And he refused to let go. And he's like, and the referee was like, what? You have to let go. It's like, hey, help. And of course, he looks at the fans. It's like, you. You're an Hasman talent. You two get in the ring. Yeah. They got tossed back out. He's like, oh, wait. Actually, that didn't happen. Yeah, actually, yeah, did that happen? No. Yeah, he tried to call. And then Bobby Lashley put him out. Actually, I'm sorry, uh, Drew McIntyre came in the ring then. And then when he then he hit Bobby Lashley with a Scottish headbutt, brawn suits, and the rest like, you two guys, get in here. They got tossed. It's like, you four guys get in here. They got tossed. And it's like, oh, okay, everyone just, just everyone in the pool. Trying to separate these guys. And it was a DQ finish. We got to fill the death, the teeth burger. In that formulaic teeth bugger. But some reason it worked a little bit. Even though that day. And the Street Profits win. Yeah, Dusty Cheeseburger. And that was raw. I'll tell you what. Vince finally figured out. Seeing people cheer. Seeing, seeing Shotsky Blackheart. And her bright, bright green hair. All she has to do is drive a tank around. That would be perfect. But, ooh, that was a Monday Night Raw. A cheeseburger Monday Night Raw. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, um, comment, email, subscribe. Uh, rest of the week, today's Monday, so this will be going up probably tomorrow morning. We can get some sleep a little bit. Uh, tomorrow is going to, I'll try to fix the issues I've had with doing live streaming with Impact. I think I was just way too impatient. I think I'm going to sleep tomorrow night right after Impact anyway. And I finish off the rest of my appetizers that I had from my watch party. Wednesday is AEW. That's when I truly finish off all the rest of the appetizers. No more appetizers for fat me. Thursday, I have off. So I feel good about that. Friday's, Smack, Friday's SmackDown. Saturday, I'm off too. Things are good. Saturday, I'm watching Weird Science. Cool. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. Bye.